Master Tavern Keeper's History of the Old World. And so, let us speak of Manan's great nemesis, Stromfels. Now, Heinrich, you were just saying that uh, the name was known to you. Oh, yeah, it is indeed, Master Tavernkeeper. In my home province of Nordland, it is not so unusual to uh, meet worshippers of Stromfels in the uh, numerous ports and coastal villages that dot our side of the Sea of Claws. There are enough wreckers and pirates secreted away along the uh, Empire's northern coast to give him ample followers, I'd say. Now, they are secretive, but uh, it is easy to identify areas where his devotees are active. You might be upon an isolated beach where an unusual rock set upon a boulder draws your eye. Upon closer inspection, you see that it is a uh, small shrine within which is carved a large shark. This is a known icon of Stromfels. In other places, you may stumble across such icons at the uh, entrance to a chapel, or hidden in a grotto, or cave in a cliff face. The trick to finding these is to look for large rock pools located beneath the cave entrance. The reason is this. Some of these worshippers of uh, Stromvels make sacrifices to their god, which are tossed to waiting sharks. What they sacrifice, I cannot say, but uh, I have heard the worst. So, Viso, you'll often find congregation pools for sharks to uh, gather in, both linked to the sea and uh, directly below these uh, secret chapels. You are not safe inland, either. In certain seaside villages, uh, you may come across a wooden icon of Stromfels in one of the dark corners of some dockside tavern. I even spied one of these when I accompanied my grandpapa to a small sailor's guild hall in old Pugsblatter on the Drossespool Bay as a uh, child. Now, my grandpapa was uh, speaking with the higher-ups in the guild with regards some business that I was neither interested in nor privy to. I was left alone in the main gathering hall whilst they conversed and joked. It was then that I spied a tall wooden box set upon a sturdy table secreted in the corner. It was uh, unlit, but, uh, but something glinted within. I was intrigued. Whilst no one was looking, I took one of the uh, unused candles from the nearby feasting tables, set it in a holder, and lit it from one of the torches that burned on the far wall. I could still hear my grandpapa and the other elders talking, and so I slowly approached the box. As the candlelight fell upon it, I saw a tall oil painting standing within. It was surrounded by a wide variety of gold coins from all around the empire, as well as a few whose origins I did it, uh, well, I did not know. The painting showed a roaring sea up from which leapt a gigantic shark. Behind it, thrust up from the depths, was a trident that dripped with blood, and this was flanked by stylized bolts of lightning. But uh, before I could study it any further, I felt a firm hand clap down upon my shoulder as the uh, fire of my candle was pinched out of existence. Oi, lad, there is nothing for you to see here. Be about your own business. Move along, move along. And so I did. Ah, 
now that is significant, Heinrich. The icon you described appears to have had all three of the most common symbols of Stromfels. The trident dripping with blood, the gigantic shark, and bolts of lightning. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so it did. Hmm. So, Viso, later I spoke to my grandpapa about it. He told me not to stick my nose into the business of the guild, as these were dangerous times. He went on to explain that the guild was uh, engaged in an ongoing surf and turf war with the fort settlement of Mannensheim, situated on a small island uh, just east of Pugsblatter. This island was home to a monastery of the Order of the Triton, and uh, to get caught in the crossfire between these two groups was to invite more to your door. Ah, yes, he was not wrong. And, indeed, it is quite common for the followers of Manan and those of Stromfels to be at each other's throats whenever their paths cross. This was also the case with regards to the uh, Temple of Manan that I visited in the city of Sartosa. Now, I first visited the uh, city of Sartosa about 40 or so years after the ending of the occupation of Sartosa by the Arabian Corsairs of Abd al-Wazak. Now, Neophytes, if you recall, Wazak had been defeated in 1501 by the mercenary army from Lucini under the leadership of Prince and Mercenary General Luciano Catena. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, of course, Abad al also featured in my grandpapa's tale of uh, Marco Colombo. Ah, yes, indeed he did. How could we forget the pivotal part he played in Marco's trajectory towards greatness? And uh, that is, of course, a tale that you must finish for us, Heinrich. Anyway, when I was there, back in the 40s, the city of Sartosa had uh, already been rebuilt in the aftermath of the siege and liberation of the city and become a heavily fortified base for the mercenary fleet of the victorious prince. Now, Catena had learnt some valuable lessons during his siege of the city, and in constructing its defences, he had built a number of individual towers that were both part of the city wall, but could also act as self-sufficient strongholds themselves if needs be. This had finally given Sartosa some much-needed stability, and with the inhabitants' sense of security bolstered, the rejuvenation of the port began in earnest. The harbour itself had been completely rebuilt, and traders and entrepreneurs from Lucini were incentivized to set up shop in the city. New markets were constructed in the shadows of old bazaars, and municipal buildings were made to oversee the running of the entire island. At the same time, the old, near-ruined temple of Manan in the city had a great deal of coin poured into its refurbishment, mostly from backers across the old world, but primarily from the coffers of the Master of the Order of the Albatross, known as the uh, Patriarch, based in Marienburg. Anyway... It was soon returned to its former glory, or as near as they could tell, for the, uh, well, Sartos had been occupied by the Arabians since 1240. Anyway, there was a great deal of celebrating, and the future looked bright once more for the Mennonite sailor priest navigators and their new shoals of followers. It was then that the murders began.